Hi everyone, welcome back to another Excel for Finance video. Today we'll talk about sources and uses tables within LBO models. A sources and uses table is one of the first things you make when creating an LBO model. It tells you what the uses of cash are and where that cash is coming from. So let's get into it. The table looks like this, and depending on the type of deal and deal structure, you might have a few different line items. In order to calculate the SNU line items, you will need a couple additional calculations and assumptions, which is what the surrounding tables are. So let's start on the right with the uses. The main use of cash is to pay the equity purchase price, which is the value you are willing to pay for the equity in the business. There are two primary methods for calculating this. The first is assigning a premium to a stock price if the company is public. And the second is using an EBITDA or a revenue multiple to come to an enterprise value and then backing out debt. In this example, we're using the first method. The stock price is trading at $54.40, but you would need to add a premium to incentivize the shareholders to sell. So the per share offer price is 1 plus the premium percent times the unaffected share price. Then to calculate total equity value, you multiply that number times the diluted shares outstanding, which we calculate down here based on stock options and strike prices. Cell E20 is our total equity purchase price, which goes into our uses in this cell. Then the next part of the business we need to account for is existing debt on the balance sheet. In an LBO, since you are normally taking out the entire capital structure and replacing it with brand new debt and new equity, you have to pay down the existing debt. This comes directly from the balance sheet at close. Some people just show net debt here because you could also use existing cash on the balance sheet to pay down some debt. That's what we're doing. Then the other bucket in the uses is fees. The two main types of fees are financing and transaction fees. You pay financing fees to the lenders, and this is usually a percent of the debt quantum. We calculate that in this section. We'll come back to this later when we're talking about our sources as well. Then the transaction fees are paid to advisors and lawyers and consultants. This is normally just an assumption. Then you add up all of your uses to come to your total uses line in L20. Moving to the left on the sources side, there are two main sources of capital. The first is debt, which is new debt that you're adding to the business. And then the second is sponsor equity. To calculate debt availability, you usually look at what has been available to other companies in the space in recent deals. At a PE firm, you can also call your lender contacts and ask them their debt appetite for this deal. So they will tell you how much total leverage will be available, as well as which tranches and which pricing they are willing to offer for this deal. These inputs go into our table down here. In this example, there is seven times total leverage available of which five times is a term loan and two times is high yield notes. So we multiply the 5x and the 2x times the leverageable EBITDA, and these two cells are our total debt sources, which then go into our sources table in cells I15 and I16. The last thing to remember about a sources and uses table is that sources always have to match uses, which means that the last source of cash has to be a plug. So you set total sources equal to total uses, and then have the sponsor equity equal the difference. The formula is total sources less sum of all the other sources equals sponsor equity. And that's the basics of the sources and uses table. I'll touch on just two more things. In this example, we are showing debt and cash, but another way is to directly show enterprise purchase price, which is inclusive of debt and cash. So the lines on the sources side would say the same, but the uses side would look like this instead. We are combining our equity purchase price and the net debt, which equals enterprise value of this company. And lastly, one extra source of cash might be that the management team or current investors decide to roll over some of their stake in the business. In this case, we would add another line in the sources, which would then reduce the sponsor equity needed to plug the difference. And there you have it. This is a very simple sources and uses table that you can use when thinking about how to finance LBOs. I hope this video was helpful. And as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions.
Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. See you next time.